Muammar Muhammad al-Buminyar al-Gaddafi, for those who may not know, was a Libyan revolutionary, politician, and political theorist who held power in Libya for over four decades. From 1969 to 2011, he served as the de facto ruler of Libya, first as the revolutionary chairman of the Libyan Arab Republic from 1969 to 1977, and then as the brotherly leader of the Great Socialist People's Libyan Arab Jamahiriya from 1977 to 2011. But what many people may not know is that Gaddafi had a grand plan, a vision for a new economic order in Africa, and it all revolved around a little-known concept called the gold dinar. The gold dinar was a proposed gold currency that Gaddafi believed would free Africa from the shackles of the global economic system and bring about greater prosperity for all. But this vision for a new economic order did not sit well with the West. And as later revealed by some of former U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton's 3,000 deleted emails, it was probably the single biggest reason for the escalation of tensions on Gaddafi by Western powers. So in this video, we'll explore the concept of the gold dinar and its significance in the larger context of Gaddafi's regime, his economic policies, and how it fits into the global economic system. Join us as we uncover the truth behind Gaddafi's vision for a new economic order in Africa and the consequences of his actions. The United States dollar is the world's reserve currency. This means that it is the currency that is held in significant quantities by governments, institutions, and individuals around the world as a store of value and to facilitate international trade. The reserve currency is used to settle international transactions and is considered a benchmark for pricing commodities, such as gold, oil, and other raw materials. The US dollar has been the dominant reserve currency for several decades, and it is widely accepted as a means of payment in many countries around the world. However, the dollar isn't backed by anything such as gold or even silver, but by faith in the fact that it's valuable. Muammar Gaddafi saw this as completely bogus and outright unfair. He wanted to create a currency that was actually backed by resources such as gold and oil. In other words, money tied to a country's actual resources. In his attempt to do exactly that, you could see why it was completely unacceptable to countries which historically relied on other countries' natural resources for their sustenance. The UK and the US could not allow Gaddafi's pro-resource value ideas to stand. After all, they have limited resources and if people believe the imaginary value of the pound sterling and the US dollar, then they can literally print value out of thin air. But this would only be case if other countries continue to use the current global financial standard. Gaddafi's plan would indeed have changed the current status quo and shifted power to the countries with the most resources and which continent is being exploited the most for resources. You guessed it, Africa. Now that we have that context, let's truly get to the nitty gritty of the issue. The goal of this new currency was to divert oil revenues away from American banks and into state-controlled funds. To put it another way, to stop using the dollar for oil transactions. Nigeria, Tunisia, Egypt, and Angola were all prepared to change their currencies. Regrettably, in March 2011, a NATO-led coalition launched a military intervention in Libya in the name of freedom, in their words not ours, because we all know that in fact, under Gaddafi's dictatorship, Libyans had access to free water, nearly free gasoline, a free healthcare system, and free education. But back to the nitty gritty. So during Libya's 2011 uprising, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 1973, which called for a ceasefire and authorized military action to protect civilian lives. With the passage of the resolution on March 17, 2011, a coalition was formed centered on NATO. Its mission, to create a no-fly zone over Libya. The irony is that the US-dominated NATO military organization is concerned with protecting Arab civilians, despite the fact that the US is the nation most responsible for killing Arab civilians. America's famous reformed economic hitman, John Perkins, 
has addressed the real reasons for the attack most directly. According to Perkins, the attack on Libya, like the attack on Iraq, is about power and control of resources, including not only oil but also gold. Libya had Africa's highest standard of living. The INF reports that Libya's central bank is 100% state-owned. According to the INF, the bank has nearly 144 tons of gold in its vaults. Perkins wrote, NATO went there to loot Libya's gold, much like modern Barbary Coast pirates. In addition to Perkins, the Russian media reported that Gaddafi, the former president of the African Union, had advocated for Africa to use the abundant gold in Libya and South Africa to create an African currency based on a gold dinar for all foreign exchange. In other words, if countries wanted to buy resources from Africa, they would have to do so in gold dinars, not dollars. The central currency would be backed by the actual value of the resources and purchasing countries would be forced to pay at the exchange rate of the dinar, which would have a much higher value than the dollar. Hence, making Africa richer by default. Gaddafi's government possesses 143 tons of gold and a comparable amount of silver. These stocks were moved from the vaults of the Libyan Central Bank in Tripoli to Saba, southwest of the Libyan border with Niger and Chad in late March 2011, Blumenthal reported to Clinton. This gold was accumulated prior to the current rebellion and was intended to be used to establish a pan-African currency based on the Libyan golden dinar, Blumenthal explained. This plan was created to provide an alternative to the French franc for francophone African countries. According to Blumenthal, French intelligence officers discovered this plan shortly after the current rebellion began. And this was one of the factors that influenced President Nicolas Sarkozy's decision to commit France to the attack on Libya. There were five reasons for France's illegal NATO war on Libya. Sarkozy sought, according to Blumenthal, a desire to gain a greater share of Libyan oil production, b. increase French influence in North Africa, c. improve his internal situation in France, d. provide the French military with an opportunity to assert its position in the world, e. address the concern of his advisors over Gaddafi's long-term plans to supplant France as the dominant power in Francophone Africa. The West preferred to bribe various African leaders to help them loot their country's resources under the neo-colonialism that prevailed after World War II during the Cold War period. Of course, the United States assassinated any pan-African aspirations, as well as potential leaders like Patrice Lumumba. In short, guys, anybody who couldn't be bribed was killed. But back to our main story here. This theft of Arab and African resources as well as the slaughter of Arab civilians, has been a long-standing plan advocated by new conservatives in the United States. The project for the new American century has a hit list of Arab countries and pays little attention to Arab casualties. What we saw in Libya was classic 19th century imperialism, the deliberate plundering of the resources of a sovereign nation state by more powerful Western conquistadors. The painful part of it, however, is that the Western powers are seen as the heroes of the story, when in fact they're the biggest, baddest villains who would do anything if it means suppressing any threat to their sovereignty and grip on the world stage. In conclusion, was Gaddafi a brutal dictator? Yes, and this is a topic for another day, but was he targeted and murdered for being a brutal dictator or for his threat to the West? Well, you all know the answer to that question. What we should really take from this is that the West doesn't care about protecting civilians as much as they do for suppressing threats to their sovereignty. NATO apparently seems to care only for the citizens of oil-rich countries. The facts are obvious, but we'd love to hear from you, so please leave a comment below. Let us know what you think was the real reason Gaddafi was eliminated. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please leave a like and subscribe for more.